from my office slash craft room so you guys can see it. I'm going to show you. There's crafts. There's crafts in here. <laughs> so you can see kind of where I'm sitting at. So this half is office. The other half is craft room. And what I want to talk to you about today is this blog post that I wrote. It says March 2015. Um, this is about a year after I got rid of almost all my craft supplies. So eight, nine years ago. So I, and not all my stuff. So I want to tell you the story and I want to use it to help inspire you. If you are feeling overwhelmed, especially with like holiday crafting and all that kind of stuff, um, what you should be doing. So a little bit of a background. I was in Walmart last night and I saw they have like a new dollar section. That's kind of like target and where I moved, Target's three hours away. It's so, oh, it's heart-wrenching. All we have is Walmart. And I'm very grateful that we have Walmart. So we have a Walmart here in my town, a Walmart in the next town over, which is about 30, 45 minutes away. And then um, I think the next closest Walmart after that's like maybe another hour and a half hour out. So everybody here shops at Walmart. So I'm at Walmart in the new dollar section they have, and I'm looking at stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty cute. You see this cute little clear plastic container that makes me think of those home edit girls. And I was like, oh, that's really cute. And I pick it up and it's $5. I was like, $5 for a little piece of plastic that you get at the dollar store. Um, so they get us when we buy the craft supplies and then they get us when we buy all the stuff to store the craft supplies in. And I know that there has to be a better way. Like, and I'm experiencing that better way. So I put that $5 thing down because I truly don't need it. I don't have anything to put in it. I left the store and here's why I don't have anything to put in it. And I want to share this as a way to inspire you. If you are feeling like you have an overflowing craft room, you feel like you can't create, you're overwhelmed, you hate your stuff, you've got guilt over not using what you have. Like, raise your hand if you felt any of this. I absolutely have. Um, and so what if instead you could have the new, new, new stuff, right? Go get to buy new stuff. You get to go shopping. You could feel good about crafting. You could actually use your space because it's not full of crap. And you feel organized. You feel inspired. You feel creative, right? That's what we all want. And I have this face, this uh, Instagram account called Best Craft Rooms. We're almost at 110,000 followers, which is <laughs> blows my mind. But it's so awesome because everybody loves craft rooms and you like to see the inspiration. One of the comments that I get there all the time is, um, I do have rules. People are supposed to be nice in the comments. But sometimes people aren't. So one of the comments that I get a lot is, these aren't real craft rooms. Nobody's craft room looks like that. Well, some people's do. And so what's their secret? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into that. Um, I'd love to know where you guys are joining me from down here. I can see in the chat. I've got two screens. So if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm looking at the controls for my software. And oh, it's got my logo for my other business on here. That's fun. <laughs> so I'll have to do so. I haven't used this for smart, fun DIY or best craft rooms before. Um, Okay, so I'm sharing this as a story of hope that if I can do it, you can do it too. So this is how I craft now. So I used to be a craft hoarder um, and I shared about that in a blog post. I posted the link here. There's three different blog posts that go in this series. And hi, Beady Bomb Bomb Elizabeth. <laughs> um, there's three different videos that go in this series and are three different uh, blog posts. And it talks about how I used to be a craft hoarder, how I, used to, how I wanted to throw all my stuff away, and then what happened afterward. Now, I wrote these posts like, what, 2015 is like seven, going to be eight years ago. Um, and that's a year or two after all of this happened. Since then, I've changed so much. So let's talk about where I used to be. I used to have a 500 square foot craft studio in my house. Like instead of walking in and you've got the a uh, formal living room and the formal dining room. And then there was like this room off to the side, which was a fourth bedroom, but it didn't have a closet. Um, instead of having that be like, like my neighbors had where they had like the white couch and the nice table and it had, no, nah, it was craft, craft stuff everywhere. I had craft tables. It was awesome. Um, so I had that much space in the house, plus a three car garage full, full of stuff and a storage unit and a retail shop. Like, oh my God, make it stop. Okay. So it was just so much 
so much stuff I had and I could justify everything that I bought. I was like, oh, I need this. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, I can't find this again. Oh, things like this are hard to find. I would go to downtown LA and I would source stuff from like weird places <laughs> and digging through like trash bags of stuff in these warehouses and finding really cool things that I would then sell on Etsy or put in my kit clubs or put in my scrapbook kits that I sold or use in my own projects. Right. And I would be like, because I had a business around it, I not only was like, oh, I need five of these for myself. I was like, I need 500 for, <laughs> for my business. And so it was like on this scale that was just insane. And almost all of us who have too much stuff have justified everything that we bought. I'm going to use it for this project, that kind of thing. What happens is then I went into debt. I felt guilty about not using my stuff. Things started falling apart. Like it was low quality stuff. It dried up. It was ruined. Like I can't tell you how many markers I've thrown away over the years because they just dried out. Um, and not like markers I never took the cap off of. So it's not like I didn't put the cap back on. It just happened. So then I'm out all this money and the stuff is, is messed up. So in 2014 and 2013, a lot of crazy stuff happened in my life and I really started letting go. And this is the story that I shared on my blog with that post that says why I almost threw all my craft supplies away. I legit wanted to put them in the middle of the driveway and light them on fire and just be like, I'm done. I'm going to start over. I didn't do that. <laughs> Most of that stuff went to really good homes. Um, and now where I'm at this many years later, I'm, I've moved from that house to an apartment from that apartment at the beach. I moved to this house in the middle of nowhere, Arizona. It's freaking awesome. Um, and now I'm virtually stuff free. And I was telling a friend about this a couple years ago. I was like, what if we could craft where we like, didn't have all the stuff, right? We had the tools, right? Like I'm not going to buy a new sewing machine every time I craft, but like, I don't have the thread for it. And I used to have thread in every color, you guys. I don't have the thread now. So I actually went to Joanne's uh, last, no, two weekends ago and bought a bunch of fabric and stuff to make Christmas presents with. And I was like, oh, I have to buy the thread because I don't have it. But it's great. It's okay. It's okay that I don't have the thread because I was like, what thread am I going to buy? Am I going to buy white and black and gray because that goes with everything? Or am I going to buy the turquoise or I was like, no, I bought the neutral colors, right? Because I don't want to be storing a bunch of stuff I'm never going to use again. Okay, so um, what zero supply crafting looks like now, the experience of it, is I buy what I want when I'm ready to make a project. So I get the newest, newest, new of everything. I don't keep a huge stash. And that means there's less stuff to dry out and get ruined over time. And if I buy something, I use it up or I donate it rather than store it. So I feel really good about everything that I buy and everything that I am working on. I'm not hoarding stuff. I am looking across at a pile of bags from Joanne's, which is the projects I'm going to work on this Christmas. I'm not buying anything else till those projects are done. That's Those are my projects right now. I'm not buying and adding new stuff. And this kind of goes contrary to what we've been trained to do because that's what the craft industry needs us to do. And you guys, I was in the craft industry a long, long time. I don't know if I necessarily want to say was. I've been in the craft industry a long, long time. They need us to buy stuff. That's what it's built on. Okay, so it's really, it's okay that we're like, oh my God, they came out with a new thing and I'm so excited about it because like, that's, that's what they want us to do. Right. But for us, us personally, we've got to do what's best for us. And that might not be in our best interest. And so I was like, okay, what if I went to having zero supplies? Like I used to have a wall with all these bottles of paint on it and it was so pretty. And I spent all this time organizing it. Then I'd have to dust it. And then I would use up a paint and I'd be like, oh, I got to buy a new one. And then new paints would come in and I'd be like, oh, I got to find places to put those new paints. And oh my God, I spent so much time doing that. I don't do that at all now buy the paint that I need for what I want. And then I get rid of it. And if I, if I, like I have some paint right now that a brand sent me like two years ago and I'm like, I'm still working through it until I get done with it. Not buying new paint. So, um, let's kind of go through a little bit of an exercise here. So how does zero supply crafting work? And you probably are like, no, I don't want that. I love my stuff. The, if you love your craft supplies, that's totally cool. What I'm I'm offering here is another idea for those of us that are in that place of feeling overwhelmed. We can't walk in our craft room. We can't get stuff done in there. We're not inspired. We're feeling all these yucky things when we sit down to craft instead of feeling 
what we wanted, and this is why we want the best craft room, is we want to feel inspired. We want to have the creative juices flowing. We want to feel like, man, I'm creating something in the world. There was nothing. There was this pile of supplies and I have made a thing and here's my thing I made and I'm so excited about it, right? Like that's what we want to be feeling, not the negative stuff. So if you are feeling all those good things with all your stuff, awesome. You don't have to change anything, okay? If you're feeling all these negative yucky feelings, I'm offering to you another way to go about it. So Biddy Bomb Bomb, Biddy Bomb Bomb Elizabeth says, my husband and I were talking about that. I'm in the middle of downsizing my supplies. Yeah. And, and things have changed so much, especially with COVID. Like when we were in the middle of COVID, I was like, man, can we do this? Can we do zero supply crafting? Because the stores were out of stuff and you couldn't find anything. All of a sudden, everybody started like sewing and baking bread and doing all the stuff they never did before. <laughs> and so I was like, can we do this? And I'm like, no, nah, we're right back where we were. You can find anything that you need on the internet or in a store, like legit, there, there's not, we don't need to stockpile it. We do not need to be providing warehouse space. Like let Walmart and Joann's and Michael's and Hobby Lobby and all those stores, let them have the warehouse space and Amazon and Alibaba or whoever you buy from your favorite mom and pop online shop, your favorite mom and pop craft store. There's a paint store here in town that I love going into because I can support a local business. And I let them be the warehouse. I don't need to buy the collection of 120 paints because I'm only going to use four and the rest are going to dry out, right? So um, let's talk about what zero supply crafting is. If this sounds appealing to you, I would love to hear what you think about it. This is a concept I came up with and I told one of my friends about it and she was like, oh my God, Jennifer, I just got goosebumps as you told me about this. This is amazing. Though she has a studio full of stuff too. <laughs> All right. So Here's, there's three, there's three rules to it. One, buy what you're going to use now, use it. And then two, use it up or donate the rest. That's it. Very simple. Nowhere in there is like, organize all of this stuff. Nowhere in there is there, buy a $5 plastic bin to put three bottles of paint that cost less than $5. There, none of that is in there. Okay. Because if you do this, you take so much time you like reclaim your time from organizing and cleaning and dusting. And I'm going to tell you guys, like dusting my craft room was like a whole job, you know, before, um, especially with cats. And I got cat hair, like, oh my God, I don't have to do any of that now. It's awesome. Okay. So here, buy what you are going to use now. Here's how it works. So don't buy 120 paints, buy one. They want you to buy that big package of 120 paints, one that creates a ton of trash. Okay. Cause there's all that packaging Two. You're not going to use all of those colors. Like how many times you're probably just not like most of us have our colors that we like, just buy the stuff you like, just buy what you're going to use right now. Okay. Like if you want to buy it because you need every color, because you want that to look pretty on your wall, then own that you're buying it because you want it to look pretty on a shelf on your wall. So you can take a picture and put it on best craft rooms. Awesome. Like we love that but then know why you're doing it. Right. Don't buy all those colors of paint and be like, I'm going to use all of them. Cause you're not. We just know you're not. I've been crafting my whole life. I'm 45 now. I'm not going to use every color. Resist the deals. If you are not using it now, it doesn't go in the cart. So like I went into Joanne's on Black Friday weekend with my son. I had to drive him down to Phoenix uh, to the airport. So it's a three hour drive. So I was like, I am going to make the most of the fact that I drove six hours round trip, to take this kid to the airport. So I went to Joanne's with my son. And we were in there for like an hour. And I was like, oh my God, there's this deal. Oh my God, there's this deal. Oh my God, there's this deal. It's so, so intoxicating. But if I'm not going to use it right now, it does not go in the cart. Okay. Sometimes I put it in the cart and I kind of feel like I wheel it around the store and kind of feel what it feels like to own the thing. Usually it's not very satisfying. So take it out of the cart. The better just not to put it in the cart. They have sales all the time, all the time, all the time. I have never been in a craft store that does not have something for sale, on clearance, on discount, something. Every single one of them, even the mom and pops. Um, and remember, you can always get more later. People have said to me, well, what about COVID when they were out of paint? Okay, are you going to die because you don't have craft supplies? No, probably going to be fine. In fact, you'd probably be more creative trying to use what you have instead of like, oh my God, I need this one perfect paint from the store. I can't make my project without that paint. It's probably going to turn out like really cool if you do it without that special thing. Okay. So, um, just get what you're going to use right now. 
what you're going to use now. Now, now is a relative term because some people are like, I'm going to use this in the next three years. No, that's not now today because then you have to store it for three years. Let Amazon, let Walmart, let Hobby Lobby store that for you for three days, for three years. Then you go buy the fresh one when you're ready to use it. Biddy Bomb Bomb says, I rather not go because I don't want to get caught up on overspending for things that I don't need. Yeah. Or you go in with with the amount that you need for that project. Like, <laughs> um, you can go online and look at the price for things and be like, all right, that fabric I want to get with the pattern together should be about 17 bucks. I'm going to take 20 bucks in there with me. I'm going to leave my wallet in the car or leave my wallet at home that you have to have a driver's license and just go in with cash, with the cash. Okay. Like whatever you got to do to try to resist the temptation. If I don't want to spend a lot of time in the store, I will take my boyfriend with me because he doesn't like it. It's going to be absolutely miserable. So I'm like, get in, get out, get in, get out. If I want to spend time in there, got to go by myself. All right. So second rule, first buy what you are going to use now. And now it just means your next project that you are going to engage in. Just be realistic. Like, don't be trying to lie to yourself and be like, well, this is for now. I'm going to do it in the next three years. Like, no, this is a project you're going to do soon. Okay. I know soon is in a subjective term. Just be real with yourself. Two, use it. Use all of it. Don't buy extra. So I know like sometimes when I'm at the store, especially me being far away from the store, I'll be like, oh, I should buy three of these just in case. No, buy one and make it work. Like, and if I buy extra, I'm, I'll return it. But like driving three hours to Phoenix, I don't go there often enough to be able to return something. Um, so use all of it. Like I remember I was, when I, that weekend that I went with my son to Joanne's, I was getting yarn for a project and he was like, okay, I want these different colors. And I, he's like, oh, I got three of them for you, mom. And I said, no, 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 I only need one buddy. I only need one. And that one yarn, I'm going to use it for the projects I need. It's not going to get used up. So what am I going to do with it afterward? I'll make pom-poms like toys for the cats. I'll donate it to somebody. Like there's a little senior group up here. There's a veteran's home that I'm sure would want yarn for product. Like it can go somewhere. It does not need to go here and I don't need to store it like period just doesn't because like, when am I going to use black yarn again? I, I don't know. So if I don't know when I'm going to use it again, it's got to go. Um, so use it up. So use it. So, and in using it, you're going to use it up, but in using it, you're going to use it to make a project. It doesn't go on a shelf. It doesn't need to be put away from the bag. You pull it out of the bag you make the project and that's it. That's it. You, you don't store it. Like it's, it's like phew, crazy, but that totally is against everything that the craft industry tells us. They're like, you need to get all of these colors. And then, oh my God, we came out with limited edition color, blah, blah, blah. You got to buy these six more colors. And you're like, okay, I've got all the colors now. And then the next season, oh my God, they came out with this other colors and now they got it in markers. You got to buy those too. Like it's, that's what their job is, is to sell us a bunch of stuff. Okay, but we all know we don't necessarily need it. So buy what you're going to use now. Use it. Make the project. That is what we got into this for. If you got into this because you like collecting pretty things and displaying them, then just freaking own that. You are not a crafter. You are a collector. And that's super awesome. And please send pictures of your craft room to Best Craft Rooms. But own it that that's what you want it for. Not be, Don't tell yourself the lie that you're going to use every color of Martha Stewart glitter you bought back in 2013, which I did. And I haven't used them and I've been giving them away slowly over time. <laughs> All right. So rule number one, buy what you're going to use now. Two, number, rule number two, use it. Rule number three for zero supply crafting is use it up or donate the rest. Make cards, make goodie bags, give a gift to a friend right? Make a little care package for somebody, mail it off to them with the yarn in it, whatever, like get it out of your house and anything that you don't use, return it. It's new in the package, just return it. It's going to dry out. It's going to get, it's going to fray at the edges. It's going to get faded. It's going to, and I'll tell you guys this because I have scrapbook paper from, you know, 1998. It is going to look terrible at some point. It's not made to last that long and be exposed in the sun and the dust and all those things. And if you live in a dry climate, that affects things in a certain way. If you live in a wet climate, that affects things in a certain way. So like, let's not have all those problems. Why are you going to spend money on something that's going to go bad? Right? It'd be like if you went to the store and you bought every single type of fruit in the store. You don't because you know it's going to go bad. But we know that craft supplies go bad. Right? The glue sticks yellow. 
the the glue dries up, the markers dry up, the paint dries up, the glitter gets all stuck in there and corroded and starts to discolor, especially things that are made overseas. Nothing against things made overseas, but let's just be real. Sometimes corners are cut and weird stuff happens. And why do you want that in your house? Like, and you're storing it. Like, it doesn't make any, it, it doesn't help us. And I'm telling you guys this as someone that stored all the stuff and had all the stuff. Okay, so um, just use it up or donate the rest. And you would be surprised. Like, when I sit down and I'm like, okay, I've got yarn and I've got paper and I got glue what the heck am I going to make? I can make some really cool cards with the yarn and make some shapes. And you can do so, like when you do this, you get so creative. Like it's so crazy the things that will come out and the things that will happen because um, you've challenged yourself. Like there's something about having these restrictions that make us be more creative. So um, that's the three things. And I'm just going to challenge you to do it. One, buy what you're going to use now. Two, use it. Make your project. And three, use that supply up or donate the rest. If you have anything extra that you bought that's in the package, go return it. Right? Can you, for your next project, just use the supplies that you have? Can you treat yourself to one nice new thing and use it all the way up? Like, how satisfying would that be? Like, I remember I would open a package of stuff and I'd be like, I'm only going to use this one. And then years later, I'm like looking at this like package of Making Memories Brads, right? Do you remember that company, Making Memories? And I'm like, I use just one. I have all the rest. Like, what am I saving it for posterity? I was like, no. And it, it was like I had all these mixed feelings of like, I like these things. They're really pretty. Oh, I have guilt that I didn't use them and I put them on a credit card. How much did I spend on that? Oh, that was a store that closed. Like, all this weird stuff. All I want to do is make things. I don't want to have this funky experience when I'm trying to make stuff. So can you buy that one new thing? And instead of just using one and being like, oh, I'm going to save the rest, use all of them, use all of them and throw the package away and just enjoy the heck out of this thing you just bought. Like that would be so cool. You may have some questions that have come up about this. And these are things that as I've shared this with my friends and other people in the craft industry, these are things that they have asked. They're like, well, what about tools? Can't zero supply crap. Are you going to buy a new sewing machine every time? No. No, I keep my Cricut Maker. I keep my Baby Lock sewing machine. I keep my Cricut Joy, right? The big tools, I'm going to keep my keep my really nice Wubbers pliers for making jewelry stuff. Do I make jewelry every day? No, but I want to use those Wubbers pliers when I do, right? So I organize that stuff. I have it stored. I just have a regular, I'm going to show you guys. I have a regular closet here. It's a closet. It's a regular bedroom closet. Most of my stuff is in there. It's not all over the place. I don't spend all this time organizing it. Um, and so what I'm talking about is the consumables, right? We want to, we want to get out of the practice of buying and storing consumables. Those are the things that are going to go bad. Now, if you don't, if you don't maintain your sewing machine, right, it's going to dry out. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about stuff that you're going to use up. Glue sticks, yarn, paint, glitter, uh, little tchotchkes, little um, embellishments and stuff like that. Like, I, I was hoarding all of these chandelier crystals and over the years, you know, kind of a few go here, a few go there, a few go there. And I was like, I hoarded these chandelier crystals for years. I could have made something really rad. I could have gave them to somebody. And now I have like four of them, right? I don't know, I'll probably use them on Christmas ornaments or something. Um, but that kind of stuff, like all I did is pay all this money to store it and move it and store it and move it and store it and move it for years. Like it's so silly. I don't even remember how much they cost, but definitely cost me more to store and move them. Um, so another question I might've got is what about my huge stash, right? You already got a bunch of stuff. Maybe you can't buy more stuff. You know, maybe you feel bad about the money and you don't have the money to buy it. You're scared of getting rid of, of things. Read my posts. I go through, I, I felt those things too. Like you are not alone and feeling those things, go through and read those posts and, um, connect with me, like message me on Instagram and Facebook, whatever, um, post comment on the blog posts. Let's talk about it because we can help with this. We can help each other with this. This isn't, you're not alone in feeling that way. And there's some of us that have felt that way and have moved out of it. So let us help you. And then what about sentimental stuff? Like your grandma gave you, Whew, that stuff is heavy. Like for me, I don't know about you. If, if you identify with this, definitely drop me an emoji in the comments. 
Um, I'm going to be doing a live about this soon because I have a tub of stuff from my grandma. I haven't been able to open. So we're going to open it. And, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. Um, but for now, ask yourself if you're like, oh, I've got this thing in my drawer and it's taking up space and, you know, I'm not really going to use it. How can I honor this thing? Am I going to do something with it or can I give it to someone who will truly honor it? If you're like, oh, my grandma gave this to me and it's, it's not doing anything just sitting in a drawer or sitting in a box or sitting on the floor or sitting in the back of the closet, right? So what can you do to truly honor it? I remember when, when my grandma passed away, one of the things that I had, and there's been a few, but one of the things I had was a bunch of partially finished quilt blocks and quilt pieces and all this quilt stuff. And I actually just posted on Facebook and I was like, does anybody want this? And I mailed it to somebody. It costs like $16 to mail it. And it was like, that person is going to honor and love and make something with this stuff. It was doing nothing but collecting dust in my garage. And I feel good about it. Like I was feeling all this guilt, like, oh, but my grandma made these and oh, but I should make something. And that didn't help me move forward. Actually giving it to somebody who would do something with it helped me fully release that and feel good about it. And now I don't have that tub of stuff to carry around because I'm not a quilter. Like I'm just not. So where am I at now? I am happier crafting now than in years. I've gotten my mojo back. I feel so much freer. I have so much more time because I'm not spending all my time shopping and organizing. And so make sure you check out that three-part series on the blog. Let me know if you can relate. I'd like to know what you want. What do you want for your life as far as crafting and what's blocking you from what you want? We can totally solve this. We totally can. If I can do it, you guys totally can do it too. So I hope that was helpful with you guys, for you guys, especially going into the holidays here. I'm going to go work on some ornaments and some fun things like that. But thank you so much for watching this live. And I can't wait to hear from you about what it is that you want to do in your craft space. Is there anything blocking you and how can I help you? Thank you, Elizabeth. She says great tips. Thank you so much for that comment. All right. I will see you guys again soon. And hopefully I'll fix all my branding. <laughs> it's not going to be saying I'm on my, my other business page.